As we say goodbye to Tropical Storm Alberto as it crosses Mexico, the National Hurricane Center is continuing to monitor two other areas of disturbed weather, one off the east coast and another one back into the Bay of Campeche. Could any of these become a Tropical Storm Barrel? We'll take a detailed look, coming your way next. Welcome back everybody to the Weather Nerds YouTube channel. I am your host, meteorologist Craig Majeski, your personal weatherman. And before we get started, I first want to thank the new subscribers to the channel. And if you have not yet subscribed and if you'd like to have this critical tropical information in your YouTube feed, all you gotta do is please hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you learn on future content. And if you do like the report, please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. It really does help with the growth of the channel. All right, we got a lot to talk about. We still got some areas of concern to see out into the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. So let's check out the latest from the National Hurricane Center. So here is the latest a seven day tropical weather outlook here from the National Hurricane Center as we'll be focusing in on these two areas of disturbed weather. The first off the uh, east coast of Florida, the other one once again, almost in the exact same spot as Alberto developed here in the coming days. As we kind of break these down, uh, you're gonna notice a couple of things. Uh, first, this one up here near the Bay of Campeche is the most likely to develop there, sitting at about 50% there, uh, as it looks like conditions will be pretty conducive for some sort of development. So I think at minimum, we'll get another tropical depression to form into this zone. The other area is not quite as high. It's sitting at about a 30% chance. Uh, again, we're running into a little bit less favorable environment, a little more wind shear in this area, and it's gonna quickly run out of real estate as it's gonna be moving into the east coast of Florida here in the next day and a half or so, as according to the latest forecast models. So the morning satellite imagery here on your June the 20th here, your first day of summer, we're seeing these uh, what's left of Alberto here uh, progressing across Mexico is going to dump some extensive flooding across the interior sections of Mexico. Now down here near the Yucatan Peninsula, we're seeing just the, the startup of what will move into the Bay of Campeche and that is where we're most likely to see that depression form again in that area. And then of course you see this area disturbed weather here off the east coast of Florida, a little bit elongated. There are some stronger winds in here. So I think development here will be uh, probably pretty limited at best as this will probably increase the surf as well as uh, the rain chances here along the east coast from Georgia down into Northern Florida. So we're checking out the latest European model here as we're gonna be focusing in here off the east coast of Florida in Georgia, this area of disturbed weather right out here uh, that'll be approaching the coastline and shows development here will be pretty limited here as we go into your Friday. And it looks like it'll probably, you know, maybe increase the sea conditions a little bit. Rip currents may be a, be a bit of a problem, say from the Carolinas down into Florida. Uh, we're definitely seeing an increased rain chance in here uh, as we go into later in the day on your Friday afternoon. So a little bit wetter conditions with some thunderstorms there as this system approaches the east coast and it looks like it'll kind of fizzle on out after that as it just rolls inland there. Then we'll be focusing our attention back toward the southwestern portion of the Gulf of Mexico and whatever develops down this way, at least looking at the latest European model, appears that it'll be fairly slow and it'll be slow moving at that as the, the steering currents are going to be fairly weak in here. So it may sit out there for a little while as again we're going in through the weekend into Saturday and it just kind of lingers there throughout the week next week and dumping some very heavy rains there across Mexico, maybe sneaking into South Texas as well. But these are the same zones that have got hit pretty good with Alberta with some flooding rains and you notice by the end of the week going into the following weekend it finally moves into Mexico and heads on out to the west. So shifting gears out here to the tropical Atlantic as we look at the satellite imagery out here we got a pretty decent uh, tropical wave here coming off the coast of Africa right now. You may also notice a little bit of a brown hue out here. That is a little bit of the Saharan dust. And of course, Saharan dust is dry. That's a little bit of a tropical inhibitor. But as we go deeper throughout the summer months ahead, this will begin to diminish and the environment will become a little more conducive for tropical development. Now, the other thing I will continue to monitor here is gonna be the ocean heat content. That's in that main tropical development zone. Again, you're looking at June 19th. We're tracking ahead of last year's numbers right there. Again, we're kind of more on par what we see here uh, heading toward really the peak of the hurricane season, more like September. So there is plenty of latent heat. And remember, the whole purpose of tropical systems is to transport the imbalance of tropical heat 
in the tropics and take it to the higher latitudes. So we have plenty of fuel for the fire. The other thing we're going to be watching here as we head for the months ahead is the fact that the vertical wind shear is tracking below normal as well. I mean, we're tracking down here and you can see where the, the average vertical wind shear is tracking above this. So I believe that's the influence of La Nina. When you have La Nina seasons in effect, that means the environment in the Atlantic is more conducive because we have reduced vertical wind shear in the atmosphere that could inhibit development. So we only have another 10 days left in the month of June. You can see where the hot zones are. That area blew off the mid-Atlantic coast and back in toward the Gulf of Mexico. That's where we look historically where storms have developed in the past. And as we shift into the month of July, we can see some changes here. You notice a little bit of a, a green zone here, a little hot zone flaring up here on the mid-Atlantic coast here, as well as seeing a couple zones now showing up down here into the parts of the Caribbean as well as the Western Atlantic. And as warm as the water temperatures are out there, would not be unusual or to suspect we may get some sort of development a little earlier into that zone as well. Now again, we've already had Tropical Storm Alberto that has moved into Mexico and is now history. Our next named storm for the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season will be Barrel. And that'll do it for this edition of the Storm Break Report. Again, it looks like a very active tropical Atlantic hurricane season is ahead for us. And if you'd like to continue to get these reports in your feed, please, all you gotta do is subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, if you can help me with helping to grow the channel, please share with your friends, leave a comment, and give me a thumbs up. All that in combination really helps with the YouTube algorithm. It allows this information to get out to more people, and I truly do appreciate your guys' support. All right, that'll do it for now. You guys take it easy. We'll see you on the next edition. Until then, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, guys.